This video will cover problems 13 through 16 that were missing from the review exam one. And so for number 13, it says consider the following equation, y equals negative 5x plus 1. So we want to test the symmetry, and then we want to sketch the graph and identify any intercepts. So I'm going to go ahead and start by graphing this um, equation. So in our equation, we can look at the slope. The slope is negative 5, and the y-intercept is 1. So I'm going to plot my y-intercept. So for the slope, I'm going to go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and to the right, 1. And then I'm going to sketch the line. So by looking at this graph, we can see that there's no symmetry on the x-axis or the y-axis or the origin. And so we would say there's no symmetry there. And then it says to identify any intercepts. So our y-intercept is going to be this point, 0, 1. So that's our y-intercept. And our x-intercept is going to be this point here. So all we know about this point is that y is 0, so we need to figure out what this point is. So what we can do is we can solve for the x-intercept by letting y equal 0. So I'm going to subtract 1 and divide by negative 5. So x is equal to 1 fifth. So this point here is one fifth. And if you wanted to solve for the y-intercept, then you would let x equal zero and solve for, um, for y. But in this case, we can see that the y-intercept is at zero, one. So again, by looking at the graph, you can determine if it has symmetry. But sometimes it might be a little bit more difficult. And so we might have to use algebra to figure out if there is any symmetry. So let's look at the x-axis first. And I'm going to write the equation here, y equals negative 5x plus 1. In order to find, um, to check if it has symmetry, what we want to do is we're going to change our y. We're going to make it negative, And then we're going to solve for y. So if I divide by negative 1, then I end up with y equals positive 5x minus 1. To check if it has symmetry, you want to compare the original function, which is this function here, and our answer below. And if they're the same, then we would say that there's x-axis symmetry. But since they're not the same, then we say that there's no x-axis symmetry. Okay, so then for the y-axis symmetry, let me write the equation, y equals negative 5x plus 1. That's our original equation. And what you want to do for this one is we're going to replace our x with a negative. And then you want to solve for y. So negative times negative is a positive. So we compare our original function, which is in red, with our answer here. Are they the same? And the answer is no, they're not the same. So there's no y-axis symmetry. And then the last one is the origin. So for the origin, what we're going to do is we're going to change the, neg the y to negative, And we also change the x to negative. And then we solve for y. So here we get negative y is equal to positive 5x plus 1 divided by a negative 1. So we end up with y equals negative 5x minus 1. So we compare the original function with our answer. We can see that they're not the same. So there's no origin symmetry. There's, again, two ways for you to do this. One, you can look at the graph. 
um, or two, you can work it out algebraically. So let's look at number 14. It says consider the following, eight, negative two, eight, and four, and find the distance. So the first thing you want to do is write down what the distance formula is. So D is equal to x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So in the points that they give us, we can call this point x1, y1, x2, y2. And so all we're going to do is plug in those values. So we get d equals x2 in our example is 8, x1 is 8, y2 is 4, and y1 is negative 2. So then we simplify. 8 minus 8 is 0. Negative, negative is a positive. And 4 plus 2 is 6. So d is equal to the square root of 0 squared is 0. 6 squared is 36. So d is equal to the square root of 36 which is going to be 6. So our distance is 6. Find the midpoint. So for the midpoint, we add our x's and divide by 2. We add our y's and divide by 2. So in our case, we have 8 plus 8 divided by 2 and negative 2 plus 4 divided by 2. Simplify. So we get 8 plus 8 is 16. Divided by 2, negative 2 plus 4 is 2. Divided by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay, so the next problem here. For each function, sketch the graph of the function when c is equal to negative 6 and negative 2. 1 and 2 on the same set of uh, coordinate axis. So one of the things that um, we could do here, and I'll use this bottom part, is um, we're going to substitute these values in for our C. Okay, so if we look at the first one here, we have f of x is equal to x minus 6 squared, and that's going to be used when x is less than 0, and negative x minus 6 squared, and that's going to be used when x is greater than or equal to 0. And I'm going to do that for each one. So we have x minus 2 squared, and x minus 2 squared and then the next one is a positive one so we have x plus one squared and x plus one squared and then the last one is x plus two squared and negative x plus 2 squared. And again, this is, um, we're just substituting the values of c into the equation. So I'm going to be graphing this, but before I graph anything, let me just graph the parent function, which is x squared. And we know it's x squared because of the power of 2. So this graph here looks like this. I went ahead and wrote the four uh, functions that we're using here. And what we want to do is let's focus on this graph here. So x minus 6, originally, it would tell you that it's going to cause this parent function to move to the right six units. 
So your graph will look something like this. Okay. Now this one, since it has a negative in front, then it's going to tell you to open downward. And we also move to the right six. So our graph will look something like this. However, we have to look at these uh, restrictions. So this one is saying to use x minus x squared whenever x is less than 0. So we're only going to consider what is on this side, which is going to be just part of the graph over here. OK, because remember, if our graph was like this, we don't want to use all these numbers here we don't want to use because it's telling us that x is less than zero and so that's why we're only going to erase this part and we're going to leave this part of the graph now for the one upside down it's saying x is greater than or equal to zero so that means that we're going to use anything that is right here So I'm going to erase part of the graph. So this will come down until it gets about there. Now let's look at the next one, x minus 2 squared. So the minus 2 tells me to move to the right two units. So now I would be here. And again, we're only going to consider um, whatever is less than zero. So our graph would normally look like this, but we cannot use this part of the graph or this part. So we would be left with a graph that looks up to here. And then it says that we're going to do a negative. So the graph would open downward, something like that. But we're only going to use the positive side, so I won't be using that part. Only this part here. And then for x plus 1, that means to move to the left one, which is right here. And we're only going to use anything that less than 0. So that graph would be something like that. And negative x plus 1, that means that it's going to open downward, which will look like this. But we only want to use the positive side. So we want to include this or this. And we're only looking at something like this. And then the last one, x plus 2, means that I'm going to move two units over here. So I'm going to have part of my graph here. And when I open downward, it's going to be somewhere here. So if we compare the graphs, then we can see that this is not going to be an answer. Um, these two have vertical shifts, so that's not going to be our answer. And so if you compare our graph here, then this is what we have here. And this is what we have here. Okay, so our answer is going to be the last one. And then we have used the graph of f of x equals square root of x to write an equation for the function represented by each group. So first of all, they tell us the parent function is f of x equals square root of x. So that function normally would be this. So in order to get to the black function here, we would have to go down all the way to negative 8, right? So if I go down, I would be here. And then we're going to have to move to the left. So my new function, let's call it g of x. I'm going to have the square root still. So to move to the left, I'm going to need to write it as x plus 2, because that moves to the left. And then we need it to move down. So 
So to move down, that's going to be a minus, and it went down 8 units. So this is going to be our answer. Okay, let's try this one. So again, if it helps, you can write the graph of the parent function here. So I can see that there's some shift to the right, and I also see that this graph moved to the right, but it also moved down. And then it had some reflection. Okay, so let's see what happens here. So if we have the square root of, um, we're going to make this move to the right. So it moves to the right two units. And I represent that with a negative two. So now your graph would be right here. Then I needed to move down three units. So that's going to be represented with a minus three. So now you would end up right here. And it looks like there's a reflection. So the reflection here, we need this to be pointing to the left, but it's pointing to the right. So that means that it has a y axis reflection. So in order to make that happen, we need to have this negative here. Okay, so now our graph will look like like this. Okay, but now we can see that there's also a reflection on the x axis. So we need to add this negative on the outside, and then that negative is going to cause the graph. It's going to cause the graph to open this way. So you can leave your answer like this, or you can leave it as negative the square root of, if you distribute this, you would have negative x plus 2 and then minus 3.